Currently, we are experiencing a worldwide epidemic of obesity. In the United States, a little over 36% of adults are considered obese, which is classified as a body mass index, or BMI, of 30 or higher. Adult obesity rates are also high in the UK, with 26% of British adults obese. Indeed, worldwide, the number of obese individuals is considered equal to the number of underweight individuals. And the obesity epidemic is not limited to adults, as children worldwide are also becoming obese. Obesity has long been associated with metabolic dysfunction, leading to fatty liver, increased risk of atherosclerosis, and type 2 diabetes. What is less clear is how obesity may impact the immune system. We are particularly interested in understanding how obesity can influence the response to infection with influenza virus. Recently, both the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control have reported that obesity is an independent risk factor for increased morbidity and mortality from influenza infection. To try to understand how obesity may impact the response to flu infection, we used a mouse model of diet-induced obesity. Mice fed a high-fat diet for 16 weeks will develop obesity, fatty liver, and insulin resistance, very similar to what we find in obese humans. When the lean and diet-induced obese mice were infected with influenza virus, we found that the obese mice had a high mortality rate, with about 60% of obese mice dying of the infection, as compared to 10% of lean mice. This increase in mortality was associated with an increase in lung pathology and a decrease in the production of messenger RNA for the antiviral cytokines interfere on alpha and beta. Other immune dysfunctions that we noted in the infected obese mice included a reduction in natural killer cell activity and reduced or inappropriately released cytokines and chemokines. This study demonstrated what happens in a primary influenza infection in an obese animal. We also wanted to determine what happens with the secondary exposure to influenza, as would be expected in a human population. To prevent or limit infection from a secondary exposure to influenza, immune memory must be developed during the primary infection. Because we were primarily interested in the cellular immune response rather than the humoral immune response, we used a secondary infection model in which the primary infection was influenza X31, followed 30 days later with an exposure to influenza PR8. These two viruses differ in their surface proteins, so antibodies will not be a factor in this model. However, X31 and PR8 share internal viral proteins, which the cellular immune response can recognize. Following a secondary flu infection, lean mice were 100% protected from mortality from the PR8 influenza infection. However, approximately 25% of the obese mice died. Weight loss, as an indicator of the severity of infection, was also greater in the obese mice, and their lung pathology was more severe. To explain these differences, we looked at three different aspects of immune memory, generation, maintenance, and function. Memory cells must be generated during the initial influenza infection. However, we found that obese mice generated far fewer memory T cells compared with lean mice. Once generated, the memory cells must also be maintained, and once again, the obese mice were less able to maintain the memory T cells that they had generated. And finally, the memory cells must be able to function during a secondary infection. And we found that the memory T cells generated in the obese mice were less able to respond to the influenza challenge by producing gamma interferon. Therefore, obese mice had impairment in all the properties of immune memory, generation, maintenance, and function. Because of these findings, we reasoned that obese humans may also have a suboptimal response, so we used vaccination as a surrogate for infection. Using influenza vaccination, we measured the antibody response to seasonal trivalent influenza vaccination in a healthy weight, overweight, and obese adults at 30 days and 11 months following vaccination. As shown in the figure A, we can see that as BMI increases, the antibody titer drops. In figure B, we see that for each component of the trivalent vaccine, a greater percentage of obese individuals have a greater than fourfold drop in antibody titer compared with healthy weight individuals. In addition to the antibody responses, we also measured the ability of both CD8 and CD4 T cells to respond to influenza stimulation. We took peripheral blood mononuclear cells from our healthy weight, overweight, and obese individuals and exposed them to influenza virus in vitro, and then used flow cytometry to measure the activation markers like CD69 and CD40L, as well as functional markers like granzyme B and interferon. We found that both CD4 and CD8 T cells from obese individuals were less able to activate upon exposure to influenza virus and were less able to function. And to our surprise, we also found similar defects in the ability of T-cells from overweight individuals in response to flu challenge as well. 
So to summarize our studies, we believe that obesity can affect the ability of immune cells to function properly, putting an obese and perhaps even overweight population at increased risk for influenza infection, even if vaccinated.